Okay, guys, so for chapter 11, all right, our abbreviated chapter 11, we're going to go ahead and start with a lesson called Angle and Line Relationships. So um, here's the funny thing about this is not all of them. Okay, a lot of things will be new, but you're going to see a few things that are, will look familiar from elementary school on here. And, uh, and so let's go ahead. We have a couple of pages of vocab. So here we go. Um, our very first word uh, are called vertical angles everyone vertical angles. all right so not a word but a phrase right your book says this is when you have two pairs of opposite angles formed by two intersecting lines it says the angles formed are congruent okay that's extremely important so for example you have these two intersecting lines here Okay, this is vertical angles with this. As a matter of fact, that is vertical angles with that one. Okay, now this is not vertical angles with that, right? That's why I've made them different colors. But here's the main part that you need to know. These angles are congruent, meaning they have, they're the same size, so have the same measurement. So this one right here, that angle and that angle will be congruent always the same measurement okay same thing here these angles here this one and this one here they're vertical to each other and so they therefore they're congruent with each other okay now here's another one adjacent angles everyone adjacent so these are two angles that have the same vertex share a common side and do not overlap all right so Basically, angles side by side. If you take a look, they share a vertex. There it is. I'm talking about this angle right here and this angle. Those two angles, they share a vertex. They share a common side, which is this one right here. It's the line right between or the ray right in between it. And they don't overlap. All right, they're just side by side, share a common side. They're called adjacent angles. Now, using... Uh, we're going to get into some elementary school stuff. So talking about adjacent angles, there are some special adjacent angles out there uh, or what could be adjacent angles. And the first one is, are complementary angles, everyone. Complementary angles. This should look familiar to you guys. These are two angles. It says two angles are complementary if the sum of their measures is 90 degrees. So for example, two adjacent angles that are complementary would be that right there. And I could draw a little square there in the middle for 90 degrees. So this right here plus that is equal to 90. Okay, now just because if they're two different angles though that are separate, they're not adjacent, those can also be considered complementary angles because they both add up to 90. So you have complementary and then you have what? Can any of you guys remember? I heard a couple of people whisper it. Supplementary angles, everyone? Supplementary angles. Same idea. These are two angles. This is two angles are supplementary if the sum of their measures is 180 degrees. So here, I don't know why that little break is there, but pretend that's a one long line. That right there are adjacent supplementary angles, right? They share a vertex. They share a common side. They don't overlap. However, those are supplementary angles that are not adjacent. They're just two separate angles that would add up to 180. Okay? Question so far? All right. Here comes our next set of words here. Okay, here we go. Here's a really hard one. Perpendicular lines, everyone. Perpendicular lines. All right, I'm being sarcastic. Hopefully you guys know what perpendicular lines are by now, right? There they are, right there. Perpendicular lines look like this. Here's what's important, though. This is why we're talking about this. These are lines that intersect to form a right angle, meaning 90 degrees. That's why the perpendicular lines are important to know. Okay. As a matter of fact, they don't form, rarely do they form a right angle, right? Because you have, if it, you just have the two intersecting lines and they're perpendicular, they form four, four right angles, if they're intersecting like that anyway. All right. Parallel lines, everyone. Parallel lines. Two lines 
it says in the same plane that do not intersect. All right, so I always remember my elementary teacher when I was young saying, oh, like railroad tracks, okay? I don't know, railroad tracks curve, right? But, but yeah, basically, okay, looks just like this. All right, <clears throat> now comes something though, we, we talk about these two things that are review for the most part, but here comes something that is not review, and this is more of an eighth grade word, and that is a transversal, everyone? Transversal. Okay. So this is a line that intersects parallel lines to form eight angles. Okay? So here's what it's talking about. You have parallel lines. You have a line that intersects them, and it forms eight different angles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight angles. Okay? Now, here's the reason why we're talking about this is because there's some special things about when you have parallel lines, two parallel lines with a transversal, there's some special things about these eight angles that you'll need to know. All right, so here we go. All right, so there is a pair called Alternate interior angles, everyone. Alternate so if you take a look, right, alternate interior, you, you can kind of get a decent idea of interior angles inside, right? Alternate, all right? So here's what this is. These are non-adjacent angles found on opposite sides of the transversal, okay? So there they are. Now, what you see is, is it shows following are congruent. That's my little kind of like a, I don't want to call it a footnote because usually footnotes are down below, right? But everything, the next three parts that we're talking about, they're congruent to each other. So alternate interior angles look like this and just know they're congruent. They're the same measurement. All right, here's another type of set of congruent angles. Alternate exterior angles, everyone. Alternate exterior. So you have alternate angles, right? Exterior means outside. Well, that's pretty much what this is saying. These are non-adjacent exterior angles found on opposite sides of the transversal. All right? So, that kind of that two goes with of course the diagram. Exterior outside of the parallel lines. Okay? They look just like that. Those are congruent. And then corresponding angles, everyone? Okay. These are angles that have the same position on two different parallel lines cut by a transversal. So like that. Those are corresponding angles. Okay. If you take a look, those would be corresponding angles. Oops. These would be corresponding angles. Okay. And of course, those are corresponding angles, all right? So then they're all equal or congruent, equal in, measure, in measurement, or congruent to each other. Okay, so here's what I'd like you guys to do. Um, go ahead and take a look at page 494 on your in your book, 494. All right, and you can see what I was talking about earlier. There are, it's just a diagram with all of what we just talked about. All right, there's tables, there's diagrams, there's a lot of stuff on there that will help you out. Okay. 494 and 495. All right, so here we go. Let's take a look at some of these problems. All right, most of you guys have your paper out, ready to go. Make sure your name's on it. All right, here we go. Looking at page 498, 498. I want to take a look at problem number 15. 
So I'm going to just quickly draw the diagram. You have two parallel lines that are kind of going in a diagonal. There it is. I'm just drawing it because you guys, but you guys have it in your book. All right. This is saying they have like little cursive. This is line G. This is line F. And then they have a transversal that's actually just completely vertical. And that transversal is T. Okay. Now, the directions just clarify some things. It says, in the figure at the right, it, and you see this little thing like this, that is just a math symbol saying that line F is parallel with line G, and T, it says, is, is a transversal. Now, there's a big condition here they're telling you. The measure of angle 6, which is this angle here, it says is equal to 52 and 6 tenths, 52.6 degrees. Then it just goes on and says, find the measure of each angle, explain your reasoning, which is pretty important. Okay, so number 15, right? It says they want to know what's the measure of angle 3. Well, on here, this is angle 3. So the directions again says, what's the measure of the angle? and explain your reasoning. So in this case, we can say step one, I'm going to put the word vocab. Study your vocab and take a look and find out what those angle pairs are. These angle relationships and what are they guys, you remember? Well, if you take a look, they're inside the parallel lines. Nicely done. I am very proud of a student taking time looking in the book and finding the answer. Good job. All right. We find it funny, but so many of us think we should have already have it memorized. No, that's what homework's for. Homework's to get practice to memorize these things. So these are... Alternate interior Angle. angles. Here's what I would suggest. You could find the measurement and then talk about it. But I would say talk about it first. Because, of course, you have to know what they are to be able to find the measurement. And what do we know about alternate in interior angles? They're the same. They're congruent. So if 6 is... 52.6 degrees, guess what? I'm doing step two here. So is three. 52.6, 52, oops. Obviously I was doing percentage with my other class earlier. <laughs> 52 and 6 tenths degrees. It does say explain your reasoning, so you might want to make a, at least, it doesn't have to be a long, but maybe a short, complete sentence. They are alternate interior angles. And then the second half, of course, 52.6 degrees is the measure of angle three. All right. Questions? All right, try this one out. Problem number 20. Problem number 20. All right, Needs more time. Okay.
Anyone still looking? Still trying it out? All right. Give you guys about another 15 seconds, and I'll let you guys share. Again, those of you that are done early, continue on with the rest of that homework assignment there, or at least that section. Okay, 30 seconds. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and share. Go. I got alternate student angles. I further the Gs. I got Here we go. So on problem number 20, right, they have uh, want to know what's the measure of angle 1. Well, angle 1 is right here. Now, it might help on me explaining this if I label every single angle. Angle 2, angle 4, angle 8, and then we have 3 and 1 already written, and angle 7 and angle 5. Okay, so... Um, I always love talking about this because this is one of those problems that there's actually more than one correct answer. It depends how you go about doing it. Now, probably more than likely, though, what you found was was that it it was it was a little more challenging than this one because it, it was a two-parter. It was a two-parter, so you had to use your knowledge of a couple of different vocab words to be able to get the right answer. So, if I take a look. For number 20, like I said, it, it's asking us about angle 1. What's the measure of angle 1? So angle 1 is here. They've given us angle 6, which is here. Now the problem is, is those two angles don't fit any of the vocab words specifically. So I'm going to share with you guys what the book has, but I'm going to see if you guys have anything that may maybe a little different okay so here's what the book has they said okay well right because the first part is vocab so what I do know is is that one and two are corresponding angles right I also know that one and eight are alternate alternate exterior angles but one and six, I don't know. But here's what I do know. That six is related to two and eight. I can actually go, I'm gonna go with eight. Ladies and gentlemen, num six and eight are supplementary angles. Right, they both form what would be a straight angle or straight line, which is 180 degrees. So if that's the case, if six, if six is 52.6 degrees, to be able to find out what eight is, wouldn't I have 52.6 plus some number equals 180? Or better yet, more than likely, you guys would have just subtracted 52.6 from 180. Found the difference in the two. Right, and if I was to grab my calculator, 180 minus 52 and 6 tenths, and I get 127 and 4 tenths degrees. So, if I take a look at that, I'm, so, I'm saying, okay, well, I would start by saying, going through here, right, supplementary angles, so I'd say, Angle 8, the measure of angle 8 is 127.4 degrees because 
it and angle, the measure of angle six, I guess, are supplementary. There's the first part. And then I would turn around and say, the measure of angle one is 127.4 degrees because angle one and angle eight are alternate exterior angles. I'm going to add a little more and are congruent. So it's kind of like doing problem number 15 twice. But you have to definitely have a goal. You have to identify a goal beforehand. Okay, you guys, questions on that? Can you find the degrees? Say that one more time. How did I get that? I, I'm not quite, I mean, on, for example, no, I'm just saying, like this? If it was like eight and five. Okay. Well, you should be able to get any of those off of knowing the one angle of 52.6 degrees. Guys, does anyone know what four and six is? What kind of angles? Those are vertical angles. They're vertical. There's two intersecting lines, and they're across from each other. What do we know about vertical angles? They're congruent. Okay. This is a this. This, you're not going to do a whole lot of calculation in this lesson. It is vocabulary. It's not only vocabulary, but understanding why is that vocabulary significant. How is it related to the angles? Okay. Are they the same? Are they supplementary? Are they complementary? Okay. So that, that's why I specifically pointed out those two pages in your book. Because you will need to flip back and forth those two pages. Pages 494 and 495 are your best friends during this lesson. Okay, you need to be able to, you might have, hopefully, no complementary and supplementary angles. Okay, that is an elementary school standard. Okay, the other things are not, though. All right, so you need to be able to recognize and then use those to help yourself out. Okay, especially supplementary angles are very huge on this. Because these two are supplementary. Six and two. But what else I was going to say is, is if six is 52.6 degrees, they are supplementary. Look at two. Two would have been 127.4 because they're supplementary. I would have done the exact same calculation. But my second part would have been angle one is 127.4 because one and two are corresponding angles, meaning they're congruent. So that would have been another way I could have solved it. You know, you could have said six and four are vertical. So that means four is 52.6. Four and three are, comp are um, corresponding angles. So therefore, three would also be 52.6. One is 127.4 because three and one are supplementary angles. And so I subtracted. Okay. All I did, I just found that answer three different ways. And, I, and I, that's probably not all of them. There's probably more to it. Guys, other questions?
here's what I want you guys to try. Okay, this isn't on the lesson, but I, I can see in some of your faces that we're not quite understanding. I want you to try another one. All right, this time use your notes. That's I was kind of laughing about it, but I, when Real earlier said, you know, he looked in the book and all of us laughed, I kind of jokingly congratulate him, but I'm, I'm not really being sarcastic. I mean, that's what you guys will need to do to do this. Flip back and forth, let the notes help you. But the goal is, is by the end of this lesson, that you will memorize all of those vocab words. Okay? So that, that's, that's what the goal is. That's why we're doing the homework. That's why we're doing the practice. All right? So here's what I want you guys to try. Um, try out problem um, Trout, uh, I'm sitting here looking. Take a look at, uh, try out problem 17. Problem 17. How many of you guys need more time on that one? Okay. Okay, 30 seconds, turn to your neighbor and share. Go. Okay, number 17 mentions angle 2. Now, I, I'm hoping that we do understand that we are relating angle 2 to angle 6. Everything, that's why they tell us about angle 6 and the directions, because we are relating everything to angle 6. We're using that information to help us out with all of these. Guys, angle 2 and angle 6 are right next to each other. Now, I don't know, I, I'm kind of listening to some of your conversations and I can see that maybe some of us might be helped by on especially on this problem taking out the bottom half we don't even need it ladies and gentlemen those are just two crossing lines that's it two crossing lines and so I mean whenever after one minute I looked up and many of you needed more time I it, that's a little worrisome because if I take a look, six and two are, I mean, this is, this is what I'm looking at right here.
I, I've just kind of cut off the bottom section and that and the continuation of the transversal. That's what I'm looking at right here with six and two. Ladies and gentlemen, those th those are supplementary angles. That's that's elementary school vocab. And I know that supplementary angles, even though it is flipped upside down, but it, they they equal 180. So all you had to do is take 180 and subtract 52.6, which is what we just did in the last problem. That's why I had a hard time finding one to give to you guys because I thought that it might be a little too easy for you. But, I mean, there it is, 127.4, because 6 and 2 are supplementary angles. Okay. question 180 180 degrees this is right here this is called a straight angle right and that's 180 degrees if I draw a ray coming off of here creating two different angles those are now called supplementary angles so it's two angles one put together is 180 degrees meaning it creates a straight line Okay, so that's what I mean. So, you know, if you if I flip this upside down like that, that's those two create a straight line. It's just that I think some of us are just having a hard time seeing some of these things, especially if like lines keep going. So that you know, just some strategies, some things to think about. You know, if, if you see angles together like that, you know, cut off the bottom part. You don't need it. You know, and if on that case, it's okay to kind of imagine it without you know, without that part. So now all of a sudden you can see that that's kind of what we're looking at. Okay. All right, let's move on and then I'll let you guys ask more questions in a bit if you need to. Let's take a look at page uh, 498. Let's take a look at problem 21. Okay, problem 21 looks kind of like this. And we have point F, the vertex part of this is G, and this is point H. And then coming off here, looks kind of like that. And there's a point J here. And it says this is angle one, and it shows a little box here. Okay, so problem 21. All right, here's what it says. It says, if the measure of angle FGH is 165 degrees, find what the measure of angle one is. Okay, so it says this here to here, this whole angle right here, FGH, so it's that whole angle is 165 degrees. So here's how I, how I explain it to like my math seven students. Like if I have like this line segment, or I should, maybe I'll make it into a line segment like that. And I say, okay guys, this whole line is 10. This from here to here is seven. What's that? Three. three. You know that 10 minus seven is three or seven plus that missing segment is 10. Okay, I don't know if you guys remember in elementary school, maybe in kindergarten or something, sometimes they have the, like, the box. Seven plus box equals ten. Okay, that was their way of doing algebra with you. They just didn't put a variable there because you're learning your alphabet and might have confused you at the time. All right? <laughs> okay, maybe, not, maybe this isn't a kindergarten you know, math type of problem. But, you know, it wasn't long after that that you saw stuff like that. So, listen, just because these are angles doesn't mean that this is any different than that. Okay, what we have here is it's given us the total, kind of like how here we had the total was 10. In our directions, it says the total is 165. It wants to know, what's the measure of angle 1? Well, here's what I do know. This angle right here is 90. So I know that 90, kind of like 7 plus box, well, 90 plus box or plus one. I don't even want to put one though because then it looks like a number one. We just call it X is equal to 165. 
So if I'm writing steps here, here's what I would say. Step star is sometimes it helps us, you know, fill in or identify angles that are not written down yet. Like I just did, 90 degree. You see the box and people go, well, I know that it's 90, but sometimes actually seeing the number helps. Okay? Step two is, is use that to write our equation. Now, step three, and I'd really see that some people go, ah, Mr. Well, I don't need to do that. I'm just going to subtract it. I'm just going to say 165. I'm going to use my calculator. Don't do that because I'm about to give you a problem that it's going to blow your mind if you don't follow my directions here. I'm doing an easy problem with you, trying to set you up for a harder problem. Okay? So use the steps. Step three is, is solve this. So we have 90 plus x. I'm going to go ahead, and of course, we're isolating the variable. I'm subtracting 90 from both sides. So, 5 and 7, and there we go. Of course, step 4, don't forget your units there because they want to know what the missing angle is. It's 75 degrees. All right. Questions about that? Okay. You guys probably saw it earlier. I want you to try the very next problem, 22. Try that out. Okay, go. All right, anyone needing more time on that one? Okay, give you about another 30 seconds there. Okay, 30 seconds. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and share. Go. Here we go. It says, uh, if the measure of angle QRS is 158 degrees, find the measure of angle TRS. All right. So, well, first of all, okay, what I have is, is I have, it tells us QRS, meaning this whole angle here, that whole thing, it said, was equal to 158 degrees. So what that tells me is, is that both of these added up, kind of like the line segment question, is going to equal that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write this plus this equals that. 
8x plus 8 plus 2x equals 158 degrees. Now, everything is positive. Everything is addition. That means that there's no changing of signs, no, nothing. All I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my parentheses. 8x plus 8 plus 2x equals 158. And now, I'm going to go ahead. First of all, I'm going to combine like terms on this side. 8x and 2x gives me, so it's 10x plus our constant, our 8. So I'm just simplifying that side before I solve. And at this point, I'm doing what we just did up here, but this is a two-step equation. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides, and we get 10x equals 150. And if I divide both sides by 10, I get x is equal to 15. Now, be very careful when you read the question, right? The question says, or the task says, find the measure of TRS, angle TRS. They're talking about TRS, this angle right here. Now, if that angle was just X, then ta-da, 15. But it's not. That angle is 2X, which of course is double the size of X which is 30 degrees. So if you're going to write this as notes, that would be step star. Just be careful of what the question is asking, of course. All right. Questions on that one? All right, angle and line relationships.